But right now, let's go to the Middle East. Hezbollah and Israel trading new strikes against each other. At least two Israeli soldiers killed in the latest series of violence. And this just in, the Israeli defense minister says Hezbollah will pay an increasing price. This comes after Hezbollah's leader spoke out publicly for the first time following back-to-back -back explosive attacks in Lebanon, using pagers and walkie-talkies, even some solar devices. In all, 20 people killed there, more than 3,000 others injured. The latest happened yesterday, and a day earlier, pagers exploded. Hezbollah blaming Israel for the attack, saying they crossed a red line. Listen. Thousands of pages were targeted by the Israeli enemy and detonated at the same time. With this operation, the enemy crossed all rules, laws and red lines. It didn't care about anything at all, not morally, not humanely. CBS News correspondent Imtiaz Tayab is in Beirut following the latest escalations between Israel and Hezbollah and has this report. Well, we're frankly in uncharted territory after a second day of synchronized explosions of hundreds, if not thousands, of communication devices turned bombs here in Lebanon that are being blamed on Israel. Many people here telling us they no longer trust their own handheld devices. Now, this, of course, comes uh, after we've now seen 48 hours of explosions across Lebanon. Uh, the first, of course, being pagers, uh, which had exploded almost simultaneously across the country, uh, killing around 12 people and injuring around 2,700. Some of those injuries involve people having lost their eyes or even their fingers. Uh, then, again, just a day later, we saw walkie-talkies exploding. Uh, this resulting in the deaths of over 20 people and injuries of hundreds more. Now, all of this comes at a time when Hezbollah says that it blames Israel for these explosions, but are, of course, trying to understand how Israel was able to infiltrate its communications and perhaps more importantly, weaponize them. Now, we've been doing some of our own reporting and have found that there are some shell companies which connections to uh, Hungary, uh, which may have been used by Israeli intelligence services, uh, but Israel, of course, is not confirming. Now this, as Hezbollah vows revenge for the booby-trapped devices, and as Israel's defense minister has announced a, quote, new phase of the war, saying the center of gravity has shifted to the north, and forces from Gaza are now being moved to the northern front with Hezbollah, sparking fears an all-out regional war is closer now than ever before. Read. So U.S. officials say the U.S. had nothing to do with this. So let's look at this through the lens of the U.S. perspective. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in France meeting with President Emmanuel Macron and other top European diplomats. Blinken spoke just moments ago about the situation in Lebanon. France and the United States are united uh, in calling for restraint and urging de-escalation uh, when it comes to the Middle East in general uh, and when it comes to Lebanon in particular, we continue to work to get a ceasefire for Gaza over the finish line. And as we discussed uh, with some of you just uh, a day ago uh, in Egypt, uh, we believe that remains uh, po both possible uh, and necessary. But meanwhile, uh, we don't want to see any escalatory actions by any party that make that even more difficult. So the same message emphasized and reemphasized. U.S. officials say the U.S. government and military did not have a role in these attacks in any way, and they are also vowing to investigate.